Hi guys, Geekonomics here again. So I'm now going to run through the final uh, market structure which you may be asked about in the exam, which is monopolistic competition. So in terms of our spectrum of competitive markets, we've got perfect competition, we've got monopoly, uh, we've already looked at oligopoly, which is going to be somewhere in and around here, and now we're going to look at monopolistic competition. You must be very, very careful in the exam not to confuse monopolistic competition with monopoly. Clearly, sound very similar, but actually in terms of analysis, totally different. So do take a great deal of care and a great deal of caution with that. So, the diagram for monopolistic competition, again, same setup as all of the previous ones. So we've got our price, we've got our quantity. In terms of our average revenue curve, this time it's much more elastic than the one that we will have drawn for monopoly. The monopolist, as you recall, is the sole supplier, but in a monopolistically competitive market, where we have large numbers of very, very similar firms creating similar but not quite identical products, um, the demand curve tends to be much more elastic. Remember that in perfect competition we're talking about homogenous products or identical products, and the further we move in this direction, the more differentiation that we tend to get in those products. So, our average revenue curve is a relatively flat one, like so, and the marginal revenue curve, again, slopes downwards from left to right and it's beneath the average revenue curve. And again, average revenue being demand. Once again, it's my preference, but you know, if whatever you feel comfortable with, but it's my preference certainly to include the marginal cost curve next like so, that's been our supply curve, and then to do all of your uh, sort of profit maximizing output points, and after that put your average total cost curve on, I think it's much easier, as I've said previously. So again, we want to be talking about the profit maximizing output rule, which is where MC, marginal cost, is equal to marginal revenue, and so we're looking on this diagram, monopolistic competition, for the intersection of MC and MR, which is at this point here. From there, we can then take our output point, which is QMC, and in order to get the price, once again, as I mentioned in the monopoly uh, explanation, don't take your price point from there. We need to take the price point from the demand curve, so up and then across. And so this is our monopolistic competition price level. We'll look at the efficiencies once we have completed the uh, average social cost curve. So where does the average social cost curve lie in this diagram? Well, the average social cost curve could lie similarly to uh, monopoly. It could lie somewhere down here, in which case the monopolistically competitive firm would be making abnormal profit. But of course, unlike Monopoly, <coughs> excuse me, unlike Monopoly, in a monopolistically competitive market, the barriers to entry and exit are fairly limited. And so if you suddenly start making enormous profits, other firms in the industry will want to jump in and they will soon erode those abnormal profits. So in the short run, it's potentially the case that you can have abnormal profits, but in the long run, what tends to happen and what tends to uh, sort of distinguish the monopolistically competitive firm is that in the long run, they tend to be making simply normal profits. So we add our average total cost curve. Again, minimum point is going through here. And we sort of we need to draw this so that it's tangential there and then through there like so. So average total cost curve. That is the minimum point on the ATC curve. So what happens is, if this monopolistically competitive firm is making abnormal profits, 
more firms jump in. And as a consequence of that, the profits are eroded until we get to this long run equilibrium position. And in the long run, we're simply making normal profits again. Now let's consider once again the efficiencies in this particular market. So is it allocatively efficient? Does the price equal the marginal cost? I ask myself and I look at the diagram and I see that that is not the case. Why is it not the case? Same as my previous explanation on Monopoly, if you haven't already checked it, go and have a look at it, but the marginal cost of producing QMC is at this point. So that's the, uh, the MC, the marginal cost of the monopolistically competitive firm, MC, MC, hope that's not too confusing, but you can see that price is greater than the marginal cost. And so it's certainly not allocatively efficient. Is it productively efficient? Are we producing at the minimum point on the average social cost curve? Quite clearly not. There's the minimum point. There's our uh, cost because our cost is the same as our price here. So we're making normal profits in that respect in the long run. And as a consequence of that, P does not equal min ATC. And so this firm is clearly, it's neither productively efficient and it's not allocatively efficient either. The types of firms which tend to be in these sort of monopolistically competitive markets, you're thinking of cafes, estate agents and so on, and they tend therefore not to be competing so much on price, but they tend to be competing via what's known as uh, product differentiation. Which of course is difficult in itself, you know, if you think of an estate agent, you think of an accountant, you think of a cafe, they're all selling very similar products, very homogenous products in that respect, and they're trying to compete in other ways to attract you into their establishment rather than the one next door. But that is the way they tend to compete rather than purely on the basis of price. Now the essay question last year, one of the essay questions was on the topic of monopolistic competition. Part A was on monopolistic competition and part B was on monopoly. Some candidates last year, not some, quite a few actually, wrote their whole essay on monopoly and so for the part A they basically got zero marks for it so you must be very careful not to confuse monopoly, not to confuse monopolistic competition with monopoly. Um, but that's, yeah, you don't need to know a great deal more than that for, um, for transport. So that's it, I think, for that one.